My name is uh, John Regan. I'm a singer, songwriter, piano player from New York City. The funny thing is I'm sitting here speaking in Mitchell Froom's keyboard cave. And uh, for anybody that knows music and knows about Mitchell Froom, he has some of the most rare and uh, coveted keyboards uh, in any collection known to man. So I'm, it's funny to be talking uh, amidst this legendary collection of gear. I was young one time, but that went away. I had lots of girls that went astray. All my hair was black, now it's turning to gray. So I'm sitting here singing my song. I had tons of cash, but I spent that too. The album's called Stop Time, and uh, Stop Time, the song, was really the genesis of this whole project. I had uh, been invited to a party in London uh, after I played the London Jazz Festival, and just by chance ran into the actor Jeremy Irons, who I'm a huge fan of. And after probably too many drinks to uh, even count, I got up the gumption to go over to him and say, uh, you know, I'd love to take a, a picture with you because my dad is a huge fan of yours as well. And he said, I'll let you take a picture with me if you play the piano for me. Out of nowhere, he found a cello that was hanging on the wall, grabbed it off the wall, and started playing it like a double bass. Fast forward a couple weeks, I was in New York City and I had written a set of lyrics about a guy that looks in the mirror, as many of us do, and uh, starts to get dismayed after a certain age. Um, and I married these lyrics to this uh, music that I had written. Ho, 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 stop time. I mean, Stop Time is an amazing story because it was a song that came together from a, a melodic and a, a lyrical fragment. Then I premiered the song in New York to uh, an audience that happens to include uh, the president of Motema, Jana Herzen, who ends up signing me with a record label. And then that song gets premiered to a worldwide audience uh, at one of my favorite jazz festivals anywhere, the Jazz of Juan Festival in France. Now, gonna stop time now. Everybody stop, take a foul down. How I'm gonna stop time, stop time, stop time. Now. And then after that, I fly to Los Angeles and record the song. So that song, not only in the, the, the title about stopping time and, and savoring the moment, here, I, here this one song took me across the world and across the states and found a life of its own. I had known about Mitchell Froom my entire life. I think anybody who knows popular music knows uh, some of the records that he's made with Crowded House and with Elvis Costello and Paul McCartney and Randy Newman. I mean, so many of the songs and the records that I grew up on. Well, there's millions of people adrift in this world are hoping to find themselves a boy or a girl. Mitchell's concept for this record was that I had never really made a record that was solely focused on my voice and on my piano playing. I've made a bunch of records before and there was always um, a lot of instrumentation, a lot of special guests. I mean, I had guys from The Police and from the Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers on these records. His idea was pare the record down so it's really about your songs and your voice and that there's a deep groove to the, to the pocket of the music and so the band is really grooving together. He said to me, I want this band to sound like they're your touring band. And uh, the band that he put me with was, uh, happens to be Elvis Costello's Imposters. So I think he, uh, he definitely nailed the great band part. Cool. I think that's good for that one. Sounds good. What? What is this stuff? This is bullshit. Who's this guy? You gotta be kidding. John Reagan, very nice. Yeah, we've had good fun doing this record. It's gonna be a big hit, I think. We'll all be going to Europe for swanky dinners. Look around in the morning papers. Watch the winners and read them down the takers. But in the end, it's all just pretend without you. I was very much a child growing up listening to Billy Joel and Elton John. Uh, and the Beatles. Then when I was in my teens, I discovered Straight Ahead Jazz and really made a detour for, for the next decade or so. Uh, when I started playing with uh, guys like Jimmy Scott and Kyle Eastwood and Ted Dunbar, really legitimate jazz musicians. If this is just another crazy dream that's running around in my mind, it's fine. But it was about a decade ago that I started wanting to get back into to pop songs with lyrics. That began this journey of, of trying to fuse the jazz adventure and the jazz textures with 
the economy of pop music. All miles, all miles, all miles still left to go. All miles, all miles, all miles still left to get back home again. I think this record is a very New York record, just in terms of the, the sardonic nature of it. I mean, there, a lot of these songs are love songs but there's also a comedic element. As a guy that lives in New York, there's no way to escape the energy that, that your life is infiltrated with 24 hours a day. I mean, all these songs are written at a piano that faces downtown New York City and is intermingled constantly with you know, car horns and jackhammers. So there's an energy about New York that can only find its way into the work that you do. It's been a really enjoyable experience working with John. Uh, he's got a lot of things that are unique to himself as an artist. He has a jazz background and a pop background. And in my opinion, his songwriting is really elevated in this new body of work that we're doing. He plays pop music and people might associate it with people like uh, Elton John or Randy Newman. And on the other hand, he has kind of a swing in his piano playing that uh, is sort of distinctly his own. I think the result of it is there's just this tremendous humanity and kind of a very, I would say, a very positive feeling you get listening to it. I didn't really know what the album was going to be called until we finished the album. And I just thought Stop Time felt right because it was the song that started this whole process rolling. And in a metaphorical way, it, it, it's the truth. You know, if we could all take a lesson from it and stop ourselves and stop time a little bit every day, pay attention to the great things that are going around us, I think we'd all be better for it. But, uh, you know, it's a gift to, to make your living doing what you love to do.